Hey guys, welcome to Sunday School. Um, so we have not had Sunday School in several months. We've put together kits over the last three to four months uh, so you guys could be studying your Bible at home with your family. So this month I thought we'd do something different and actually do Sunday School online. So you'll have to bear with me because there's a lot we haven't done. And I was like, where do I even start? I don't even remember what lessons we were learning whenever uh, we last met. So I thought, what better place to start than the beginning? So today we're going to take a few minutes to look at in the beginning. But before we do that, let's open with prayer and then we're going to go over our books of the Bible. And I hope I can remember them because it's been a long time since I've done the motions to the books of the Bible. So let's pray. Dear Father, we just thank you, Lord, for technology that has allowed us to stay connected in these times. I thank you for the sunshine and for the rain that's coming. We pray that you'll be with all those who are affected with the hurricane uh, that's hitting Texas and the southern states right now. I just pray, Lord, that you'll be with us. Please let your words come through me and help the students that are watching this uh, to learn something more about who you are. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so first, let's start with the books of the Bible. So get your hands. Remember, we usually do our finger exercises to warm up on Sunday mornings. Don't laugh at me if I mess up, because you know I usually do. So let's try it. Ready? So we start up here. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Burnwell, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. That was the Old Testament, so let's now see if we can remember the new. Ready? Get your football fields ready. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, and Revelation. Wow, I can't believe I actually did mess up too much. So that was pretty good. All right, so let's talk about this thing in the beginning. So if you thought, well, which book of the Bible should we start in the beginning, where would you go? Probably Genesis, right? We're not going to do that. We're not going to start in Genesis. We're actually going to start in John. So I'm going to wait for just a few minutes. For you to run and get your, don't run too fast in the house run and get a bible maybe get some paper or something you can draw with and a pencil uh, and come back so i'll give you 30 seconds and go okay so i don't think it's been 30 seconds yet but we'll wait on a few people that still need to get back with their bibles so we're going to go to john chapter one and of course, John is in what part of the Bible? The New Testament, right. And so remember Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John. And we're going to start the very first chapter of John. This book was not written by John the Baptist. That's a different guy. This John was a follower of Jesus. Now, so in the beginning, okay, so this is the first verse of the first chapter of the book of John, okay? So it says this. So you can read along, get your reader finger out with me. In the beginning, hey, listen to that. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Wow, that really sounds deep. And who are they talking about? They keep using God, but they also use the word he. So let's look back at this for a little bit. Look at the very first verse. In the beginning was the word. What do you notice about that word? Word. Like, if you looked at that word, what do you see? If you have if probably been in second grade or higher, you should pick up on this 
something doesn't seem right. That word, word, is capitalized and it's in the middle of the sentence. Well, that doesn't make sense. The only time you do that is if you're naming a proper noun, right? Which is a place, thing, or person, right? Or a specific place, a specific thing, or company, or a specific person. So, so maybe the word, word, in this sentence, this verse, is actually talking about a person. So now, let's go back and read it and think of it about a person. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. What could they be talking about? So this is somebody who was there with God in the beginning. Well, in this sentence, John is talking about Jesus. In this verse, he's talking about Jesus, and he's saying that Jesus was actually with God at the very beginning, before the earth was created, before Genesis 1. So this is actually talking about before the Bible is even thought of or written. So let's go back and read it, and then go into the second verse. In the beginning was, and let's just replace that word with Jesus. In the beginning was Jesus. And Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. Let's go to verse 2, and we'll keep putting Jesus in here. Jesus was with God in the beginning. Through Jesus, all things were made. Without Jesus, nothing was made that has been made. In Jesus was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and declares, or in darkness has not overcome it. So Jesus was in the beginning. Okay, so now with all of that knowledge, let's go back to Genesis 1-1 and read that. So go to the very front of your Bible, and we're going to go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And we're actually going to probably read it into a couple verses. In the beginning, look, we're starting just like John started, or I guess John started just like the book of Genesis started. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now that's strange. Go back to John, which I should have bookmarked it and I didn't. Go back to John, chapter 1, verse 1. Now let's, go, let's read this again from, from um, Genesis. In the beginning, God created. Well, now go back to John. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. Okay, that makes sense. Jesus is there while God created, like Genesis said. He was God, he was, Jesus was with God in the beginning. Through Jesus, all things were made. Well, that poses some questions now, doesn't it? If this is saying that Jesus made everything, then why does Genesis or Genesis 1-1 say that God created? Because it says, in the beginning, God created. Well, this is where you go to a parent or you go to Pastor Eric or even Wes or myself. And I wouldn't have known this had somebody not taught me. But we have to look deeper. We have to look deeper at this word God. Now, I have this really funny word on the board. Now, did you know, well, let me ask you this question. What language was the Bible written in? Was it written in English? No, English wasn't even invented yet when the Bible started to be written. In the Old Testament, it was written Hebrew, which is what the language of the Israelites was. It was Hebrew. So when Moses started writing Genesis, he wrote it in Hebrew. Now, so that is a strange, not strange, it's, you know, typical. So, and we've taken the Bible, we take the Hebrew scripts that we find, and someone who knows Hebrew translates it into English for us. The problem is, is Hebrew has a lot more words than the English language. So, this word, now I'm going to try, I'm probably going to say this wrong, I'm going to try really hard. This word is called Elohim. Elohim, okay? Elohim is actually a word for God, but it's plural. Now, again, if you're first grader up, preschoolers and kindergartners probably will understand. What does plural mean? Well, right now I have one apple. That's singular. Now, if I go over here, I have several markers. So these markers are plural. There is more than one. Now, so this Elohim is a plural word. So what does that mean? Well, has anyone ever talked to you about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? They are a, like a triangle, per se. So I'm going to get up here, and I'm going to draw a triangle. So we have well, God the Father, God the Son, which is Jesus, 
and in God the Holy Spirit. Now, it's really kind of hard for us as humans to completely understand this. But I'm going to give you an example a little bit to show you something that Jesus left us as an idea. And there's actually several things on earth that Jesus kind of left and created for us to kind of try to understand it. But I really truly don't think until we get to heaven and get in the presence of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit that we're going to understand. Because they are all one, but they are separate. So how can something be one and separate? Well, we'll get back to that in a second. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 1 and re keep reading for a little bit. So Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God... Okay, this is probably God the Son, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. Now I'm going to stop right there. Well, actually, let's finish that. And there was light. I'm going to stop right there. I don't know if you've ever heard me talk about sparks. Sparks is our children's ministry that covers it from babies all the way up to fifth grade. And we chose this Genesis 1, chapter 1, verse 3, as our theme verse. Because listen to this. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. We hope that in our ministry that we can show the light of Jesus to you and that God will take the light that we show you and create brighter light that you can take into your schools and into your family. So that's what we call sparks. Because sparks is if you have a fire, you got to start with a spark. And so that's where we get our theme verse for. So let's go back to this John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, all the way through 4. And let's just read it one more time before we move on. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and God, Jesus was God. Now I'm going to read it like it actually is written, like John wrote it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him and all things were made. Without him nothing was made, was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And again, that's John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. So when we talk today about this, we've already asked several questions. And asking questions is amazing. The more questions you ask, the more you get to understand. You know, have you ever thought of a question that you thought, oh, I better not ask that because it'll make me think, make people think that I don't believe in Jesus? Like, how do we know Jesus really died and came back to life? Or how do we know that God even exists? Or why do rainbows always come out whenever there's sunshine and just rain? And no, I don't, they just come out every time it rains. And all these questions that come up, they don't make you seem like you don't believe in God or don't trust God. They actually are great for you to ask because it's meaning that you're trying to figure this stuff out for your own. And that is a great step to take when you're walking with Jesus. Now, I want you to turn to one more book. It's in the New Testament, and it's Romans. So, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. And we're going to go to chapter 1, verse 20. So keep looking there. And actually, I thought of another verse just a second ago that I wanted to read that actually Eric used in his sermon this morning. If I can find it without taking up too much time. Well, actually, I'm going to use that for next week because next week we're going to look at the Bible itself and talk about that. But today I just wanted to start with the beginning. And what's, where's the best part to start? John chapter 1, not Genesis 1, right? Okay, so we're going to go to Romans and we're going to do chapter 1 and we're going to go to verse 20. Now this can get a little deep, so just hang with me for a little bit. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. Now, that kind of goes with this. Do you see where I say, see Jesus? Jesus shows himself to us every day. Even if it's in just somebody being kind, maybe you go to Walmart and somebody comes up and says, oh, hey, you know what? Go ahead in front of me. Well, that kindness is Jesus because only good can come from God and Jesus, okay? Now, it could be somebody who's got the Holy Spirit in them because they've been baptized and they have the Holy Spirit. And so they think of a good deed or they want to be nice there and the Holy Spirit is working through them. However, Jesus created 
created the world. He created everything in it. So that means that Jesus left little pictures of his invisible quality, his power, his might. I know thunderstorms can be pretty scary, and we may get some here in the next day or two, but have you ever just thought to listen to them? Not be scared by them, but I mean, they can be scary, but listen to them and think of the power that comes from a thunderstorm. Well, that is Jesus. Uh, think about the lightning. Have you ever just watched lightning and how beautiful it can arc out and make all these branches like a tree in just split seconds? Well, that's Jesus showing you his creation and his beauty and his creative nature. You know, have you ever seen how plants die in the winter and then they come back to life and beautiful in the spring? Well, that's Jesus giving us a picture of how we are going to be when we get baptized and we believe in him and we trust in him and we walk with him when we die and are rose again and get to go to heaven we're going to have beautiful bodies just like spring flowers so what this whole verse is saying in romans is that jesus has given us a picture of him in creation everywhere we look we can see something of him i personally love to go walking in the woods i love to hike and see things um, i have this picture of this tree it's a huge oak tree i mean i can't even put my arms around this oak tree and it's alive it is so alive it has green bushy tree and green leaves and it's just huge but you know the neat thing about this tree is if you walk up to it and again look at the picture it's completely hollow in one section of it in fact, so much so that my one son could practically sit in it. Okay, that's hollow, but the tree is still alive. And the insides are dead. They're gone. They're missing, but the tree is still alive. And so to me, that's Jesus saying, hey, even when we can feel empty inside because we've had a really bad day or just nothing seems to be going well, we just don't have the energy, or maybe we've been sick and we don't have the energy going on, Jesus can keep us alive and keep us going just like that tree. When I see an eagle, um, I just think, oh, I just stop and thank Jesus for that beautiful sight, which here is a little bit more common than where I grew up. We hardly ever saw an eagle. In fact, I don't think I saw an eagle until I was an adult and moved to Missouri. So just the fact that Jesus can show us this majestic and beautiful, strong animal is a picture of him in creation. And I'll give you another thing. This apple. You think it's just an apple, Lindsay. What's so great about the apple? How is Jesus in this apple? How do we see Jesus in this apple? Well, remember when I talked to you about God in the three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit? Well, look at this apple. And this isn't a perfect illustration. There are others out there, like you can have water as a drink, you can have water as ice cube, or you can have water as steam. All three are water, but three different forms, three different jobs. But I got to thinking about an apple today. So of course, if I take this apple and cut it open, and I just take the outside of it, it's an apple peeling, right? Just an apple peeling. Now, if I take and peel the rest of it, my kids don't like apple peeling, but I'm usually kind of mean and I don't peel them off because they're the good nutrition's on that peeling. But then we have like an apple, I'm gonna call it meat where it's just the apple, there's a little bit of peeling on it, but that's just the apple, that's the sweet part. That's what everybody likes is that apple inside. But if I cut it on further, so, so far we have two, apple peeling, and we'll say an apple meat. But if I cut it completely apart, what do we have inside of an apple? See if I can dig one out here. Well, we have an apple seed tiny you probably can't even see it on my finger but we have an apple seed so now we had one apple and it has an apple peeling which protects it an apple the meat or whatever and then the seed now you know the neat thing about an apple first of all the seed is kind of like the holy spirit because it's down inside when jesus died he said he had to die it was good for him to die what that can't be good for jesus to die but it was because with jesus being alive, the Holy Spirit couldn't come. He had to die and uh, pay for our sins so the Holy Spirit could come and be inside of us before Jesus was with us, and he still is. But the Holy Spirit is in us and helps us make good decisions and helps us have courage when we don't think we can to stand up for right, the things that are right, or to not do the things that God doesn't want us to do. But you know how the seed grows into an apple tree? 
the inside, it actually will use, this will start to, start to rot. If you ever seen a rotten apple, it's kind of gross. But if you plant a whole apple, and it doesn't always work, but if you plant an apple in the ground, the seed will actually use the apple meat, as I was calling it. As it dies, the seed will use that as nutrition. So the apple actually kind of needs to die for the seed to grow. Now, it takes a long time for that seed to grow into a tree, but that was just a little is situ or a little illustration that Jesus kind of left us in his creation. Now, I don't know when he created the apple, he thought that it would be a good illustration to explain what we call the Trinity, but he gave us an apple. So today, or this week, I have a couple challenges for you. So I'm going to post this on our website, and I'm going to post it on Facebook and on YouTube. So I will check all those places. I want you to do two things for me this week, and you can do it several times. But the first thing I want you to do is ask questions. Maybe this story doesn't make sense to you. Maybe you're like, Lindsay, really an apple? That does us crazy. Or maybe you say, I don't understand the God in three persons. Or tell me again why the word, word is capitalized in John. Or maybe you just have a completely different question. Like, what is the spirit that's hovering over the earth? Questions are awesome. So I would like to challenge you to come up with at least one question, either about this lesson or just about anything. Maybe it's about the Bible. Or maybe it's about John the Baptist. Or maybe it's about Adam and Eve. Was it really an apple that they ate off of a tree? any kind of question i'd like you to post or email it to the church post it on facebook or on the youtube on our youtube channel at church but post a question also i want you each day and if you want to write it and type it and uh, send it into us each day it's fine or a list each day i want you to see jesus every day think how did i see jesus today did i see him um, help me get along with my brother when he was irritating me did I see him in a beautiful sunrise? Did I see him in a rainbow? Did I see him in a beautiful flower? Remember, Jesus was in the beginning and he created everything. So everything in creation, even ice cream, because God created what needed to be, or created all the ingredients for ice cream and the person who invented ice cream, who I have no idea who it is, but they need a thumbs up because ice cream is awesome. But anyways, I want you to do those two things. Think of questions, send me questions, and send me ways that you've seen Jesus each and every day this week. And if you miss a day, it's okay. But show me that you're looking for Jesus because he is everywhere. He is with us. He promises not to leave us. Plus, he left us the Holy Spirit to, be, to live inside of us when we choose to follow him. So I'm going to close this out with prayer, and I've been so excited. I can't wait till next week. We're going to talk more about the actual Bible itself. What is this thing? And why do we read it and why is it important and are we really that lucky to have it? And why does it have such long, funny chapters and stories in it? So next week we're going to talk about the Bible. But for now, go home or go to your mom and dad, ask questions, and see Jesus. Miss you guys and we're hoping Sunday School maybe can start back in July 1st or the first Sunday in July, but we'll see. Dear Father, I just thank you again for technology. I thank you for these children who have sat down and watched this Sunday school lesson, Lord. I pray that you will help them this week maybe to memorize John 1-1 and Genesis 1-1. I pray that they will have a yearning for your word and to see you. Open their eyes, God, and show them yourself, Jesus. Show them how you are in creation and in everything that is good. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Bye, guys.